what really must be at the front is the will. As long as the country rises to make these issues pertinent and part of our national agenda, the man will be formed. The royal form will act like there's no tomorrow, and whoever has the duty will act. There's no, there's nothing like a surgery there. The issues we want to rectify are well known and well documented. Besides, we are not reinventing the wheel. Others have done so. So we are talking about the wheel to do right, to avoid a scenario where the transition is uh, very difficult, is chaotic, because it's inevitable the country must transition. I have heard some uh, actors uh, talking about a government of national unity as part of the transition, but how do you do that without going into a conversation that is open and enable citizens to participate and speak to us about what they don't like and what they like to avoid chaos? So those excuses are simply plastic. We're only inviting for will all actors to do right, and I think it is feasible. We have time, we have resources, we have space and knowledge to do that. Yeah. They're about citizens and the desires of citizens. We want to subject them to the will of the people, and when the will people speak, then the politicians must direction from the will, from the mirror of the will of the people. When we put a small mirror in which politicians see their mouth and ears, then you can't have reforms. So we want to have a debate. That was a small room for political actors. So they must be subjected to the people. Are people satisfied with the way we function? Are people feeling secure about the transition? Are people feeling secure with uh, the way resources are shared in this country? Do they feel involved? Do they see themselves as a part? So these are the issues that must come the conversation. Then the actors will see the way. So we must insist. It has nothing to do. When they say they're not interested, but they are, those are interested. So how do we bring them on board? How do we simply avoid going to a political ritual for the sake of an election? Listen, uh, a 40 year rule can actually cause boredom. Children that were born 40 years ago, some have always gotten grandchildren. And all they have known is a regime that has thwarted all manner of change and reform. Because there has been an attempt to engender change using political means through contest, a contest that has been sorted variously, so it is reason to cause uh, apathy and frustration. The political class has a duty to ignite this fire and return the interests of citizens by, by, by ensuring that they communicate hope this conversation must communicate hope to citizens and therefore invite their involvement and participation that tomorrow will be better. Is believing that they are eternal. There's no eternal political architecture. We transition. We, we, this uh, service space is not eternal, it's not ordained. And therefore we can only be performing our duty as we subsist at the moment. So the, the whole issue of um, what we learn from Kenya and the interest of the young people there, probably our political culture is a bit different and we need to understand that. But that should not be reason for the young people in Uganda to remain apathetic and disinterested. And only interested in uh, picking up phones and uh, sharing uh, pornography and what. They should be interested. The question they ask on social media should translate into activity and active involvement in what is being done and uh, they should be able to ask questions and demand for answers. Yeah, the statement you made, some people put it the way they like. People will get you right or you will prove those who put uh, the message wrong. First of all, the, the consultations should begin in earnest. But I'm trying to speak to a number of stakeholders to get a framework because it's not about my face and my personal involvement, but the interest and participation of all considered stakeholders. Probably that will be able to warm up the population to the possibilities, instead of waiting for polling day, which for me is unacceptable and something that I really think will be a very bad, bad thing for Uganda that is transitioning from a, a, a personal rule to a possible democracy if we engendered the requisite reforms, constitutional and electoral. Constitutional especially because the country needs a new consensus. I have said several before that um, the current constitution was mutilated. It was predicated on a two-term president. 
It never was the wish of the framers of the constitution that we will have a life presidency. So the predicate um, has since collapsed. So the country needs a new consensus on governance, power sharing, and the rest. So that consensus must come from a consultative process in which citizens at various strata participate uh, without limitation. Your second question is going to add cloud to our obligation in the current space. Uh, if you're going to really spend all of time in um, exchanges that do not really help us as leaders, um, I don't think it's very necessary. It only serves to undermine our effort as leaders, and uh, I think going forward, we, we have learned from um, people choosing each other, uh, this and that. We now know the idiosyncrasies, the contradictions, the biases. We know that. That should really never deter us from doing right. I'd rather that we do, we, we do that. Probably the, the past month will enable us going forward uh, to peel back um, uh, so many layers of contradictions, um, ignorance, misinformation, uh, blackmail. Uh, I'd rather that we do not really take a lot of time to go into those small, small side shows because eyes must be on the ball. If we don't do that, then we are, we, we are only allowing the country, we're telling people that we are preparing the country for a worst case scenario that I talked about in my preamble of self-succession and a monarchical arrangement in uh, our constitutional order, which I detest. And this image attendant to it is uh, a duty of all that are part of parliament. Uh, members of parliament, leadership of parliament, staff of parliament, because parliament is a, deriv a derivation from society. And therefore, it mirrors, and it must mirror, the aspirations of the people, the frustrations of the people, and their desires. So there's no amount of blackmail that should deter Parliament from executing its mandate. Parliament should assert its mandate, should assert its duty and obligation, and should not really uh, surrender it to the executive. The executive has its own mandate. Parliament has a duty to assert the fact that even when there is a considered mistake by Parliament or a committee of Parliament, that should not really blur the duty of parliament to citizens and posterity. So for me, I differ. That's why even when you have all these flying accusations, first of all, all manner of accusations should be properly investigated. It should not remain mere accusations that remain flying and then blur um, the well intentions, uh, the, the well considered intentions of parliament as a collective or as individuals.